My name is Ricky Shannon. I'm an application engineer for Trimac. And if you're like me, you've certainly run into issues when trying to 3D print parts with extremely thin features. While good design practice can help eliminate the majority of these errors, GrabCAD Print actually has two built-in tools that can help alleviate some common errors. Those two tools are called the Thick and Thin Walls command and the Variable Width Fill command. And today, I'll show you the differences in them and when you should be using them. First, we'll talk about the Thick and Thin Wall command. Here, I've designed a part. It's a fairly simple part here. We'll talk a little bit about it and what some of the dimensions are on it. It's about a two inch by two inch square here. It's a half inch tall. And we have a few things. We've got some various uh, thickness walls here. The smallest one is 15 thousandths of an inch wide, then 40 thousandths, 50 thousandths, and 70 thousandths. The outer wall is 55 thousandths. This first post here is 55 thousandths. This really small post here is a wall that is 15 thousandths. And then we have a taper that runs from an eighth of an inch all the way down to 20 thousandths. I didn't put a bottom on this part, so it came in as a multi-bodied SolidWorks part. And make note, I am actually using a straight CAD file. I didn't make an STL first. You could do this all with an STL, but it is a good feature just being able to bring in a native CAD file without having to take those extra steps to make a STL file. So we're go going to go ahead and do a comparison between what slicing apart with and without the thicken wall command does. So to do that, I'll make a copy of this. I can simply click on it up here in the uh, kind of model tree, right click, I'll do a duplicate, I'll make one copy of it. And I'll arrange that on the tray, get it lined up kind of with it, make it easier to compare. Then I'll click on my first instance here. I'll do that as solid and I'll do it without the thick and thin wall command. I'll go to my next part. We'll do that solid, but we'll do it with the thick and thin wall command. I'll go ahead and do the slice preview. And then we'll be able to preview what these two parts look like. At first glance, they look pretty similar. We could see we've you know, got the wall printed around the outside. We've got three of the four of these thin walls printed. The thinnest one did not. We got these posts printed. But when we start to look here on this particular post, we actually see a difference in how thick they are. We'll take a closer look here and talk about what's happening here. And this first part over here on the left, we have the part without thickening the thin wall. This particular thin wall is 15 thousandths of an inch thick, which is the absolute minimum that for printing on this particular printer that can be printed with a single contour. As we move over with the thick and thin contours, we'll actually see it the part printed, but it's actually thicker. Uh, it's roughly uh, 30 thousandths of an inch thick here. I don't have a measuring tool in uh, GrabCAD print, but um, if by a good kind of guesstimate that it's about 15 thousandths uh, times two, because we're trying to actually print with two contours whenever we do the thick and thin wall command. It'll actually take a, a very thin feature and beef its thickness up until it's thick enough to have two contours. Uh, typically, they'll be the two of the narrowest contours that are possible. Uh, but we end up actually changing our intended geometry when we do this. That's a very important thing to note, that instead of simply printing the part as it was, uh, we're trying to feather strength and printability. A, a single contour-wide feature is not going to be strong and is prone to potentially having some sort of gaps, maybe where the extrusion starts and stops, and other uh, kind of print quality-related issues. So in this scenario, if we're really trying to have something as accurate as possible to the CAD model, by printing with the thick and thin wall feature, we end up kind of expanding that geometry and we're no longer kind of maybe within tolerance of what we were intended. However, we'll most likely have a stronger feature as a result. If we talk about this other thin feature here, if I go ahead and turn this preview off, we could see there was a wall right here that is actually not printing on either one of these scenarios. That's because even when we use the thick and thin wall feature, it is actually going to try to favor 
uh, the contours and the tooling that goes on for the entire kind of slice, if you will. So this is all one continuous contour that runs around. And when it gets to this area here, this area is too thin for it to be able to print with two kind of contours, if you will. It's one on the way as it extrudes upwards and one on the way as it extrudes downwards, which makes two contours. So this feature is actually too thin to accommodate those two. So it actually doesn't get printed in the kind of the non uh, thick and thin wall scenario, but it also won't print in the thick and thin wall scenario. That's because, again, it's trying to favor the entire contour of that whole slice, and it gets this really small area, and at this point, it's determined what's best for that contour and that slice as a whole, that it can't midway make a change in kind of its strategy to do that part. So it's actually going to leave that feature out. However, we'll see if it's a standalone feature, that's when we'll end up being able to see the maybe the benefits, if you will, or drawbacks in some cases, if you're really worried about like keeping tight tolerances of the uh, thick and thin wall command. So now we will look at the use variable width command. So I'll get ahead, we'll kind of reset where we were here. I'm going to go ahead and turn off the slice preview. Now we'll go to this part on the right, which we were doing the thick and thin wall command with, but now we're going to set this part up a little different. We're going to keep it solid, but this time we're going to use variable width fill. And we will uncheck the thick and thin walls command. We'll go ahead then and do the slice preview, and we'll see what we get with this. All right, as we take a look at it, we'll look at it using the top view here. As you look, we'll see that um, you know our post here, which previously we were seeing thickened, uh, prints the same between both of these settings. We also see that we don't have the thinnest uh, wall here, much like we did previously. But what this command here is doing is changing the way that the machine extrudes within the borders of our contours. Where it can most noticeably start seeing that is when we're looking at these thin walls, most notably this 50 thousandths wide wall and the 70 thousandths wide wall. If we zoom in these and how they were printed originally with the setting not enabled, we see we have an air gap here, which would mean this wall would be fairly uh, thin, it's weak, and we actually don't have uh, the two extrusions making contact with each other, leaving that gap between them. This would even be the same with that uh, thicken wall feature we just looked at. While when we go and look at uh, the part printed using the use variable width fill command, we can actually see that the machine put an additional extrusion inside this particular wall, making it solid. And we can even notice as we look at this 70 thousandths wide wall, if we look at the original settings here, we have just kind of this zigzag raster fill. There's enough of a gap there now that the machine can actually put a uh, zigzag raster fill inside of that. While when we go and we look at the settings used with the use variable width fill, we can actually see that instead of a zigzag, the machine was actually able to extrude a really thick bead inside of this area in order to print it solid. So like I mentioned that this is, really has to do this command with how the machine behaves with the thickness of the extrusion that it uses for kind of filling in between contours. We can also see that when we look at the post, our original setup on this post, this is a 55 thousandths wide uh, post here on the wall, that we end up having some gaps. We also see the same thing around the border of the part. We don't have quite as good of a fill with that part as possible. We end up with a couple gaps here and there. While when we're using the thick and thin walls, we see we have a much better extrusion within here. And we've actually seen that this post here, the 55 thousandths wide post here, it's actually now full of actually three concentric circles. It was the inner and outer contours, and the raster fill is actually now kind of dialed in to be the exact width that's necessary to fill that in solid. 
where we can really see this is when we deal with tapered walls. Traditionally, tapered walls are very problematic for extrusion-based printing because we're dealing with a set thickness for a contour and a set fit thickness for that raster fill. But now, using the, uh, the variable width fill, we're actually able to kind of tweak the thickness of that raster extrusion on the fly. So if we look at the, the printing set up without the feature on, we see this uh, zigzag raster can only go but so far before the thickness of that extrusion is too wide to fill the gap in here. So that means this part would kind of have this hollow area inside of it. It could be fairly weak. While when we look with the feature turned on, we'll see that as the part prints, it gets to a certain point in which it decides I can actually start printing a very thick portion in here and it can actually taper that off as it goes, leaving a much uh, stronger, more solid uh, feature. In conclusion, though, we could see that using these two tools, we're able to actually add some strength or uh, some increased print quality when dealing with very thin features. And kind of as a recap, is that if we're not too worried about the geometry uh, maybe changing in, um, in size a little bit, and we have kind of smaller standalone features, then using the thick and thin wall command is a great option. In particular, it's really good for maybe printing something that's been scaled down real small and we're worried some features won't show up. Sometimes it can really help kind of retain some of those. But then again, if we have something with tapers or we find that we have gaps in between very kind of thin contours, then being able to use that variable fill feature is really great to get in there and add strength to those areas. So I hope you find these two tools as useful as I do. And uh, from all of us at Trimec, thank you. Say goodbye, Orville.